Okay, rapid fire, early life and prokaryotes. So the origin of life, here are the key points. Life arose from non-living matter in the very early Earth environment. Um, there was, it generally fell within general laws of the universe. No supernatural event was necessary. Um, all life descended from these early beginnings, and there is no abrupt transition from non-living to living. Rather, things were acquired very gradually. And living organisms, once they evolved, change the environment in which they were living, thereby changing the original conditions. So early Earth was a very hostile environment. Um, the Earth is thought to have formed about 4.6 billion years ago, and the earliest evidence of life are called stromatolites. They're the early prokaryotic fossils. Um, and about 75% of the Earth history, only microscopic unicellular organisms. So again, humans are just a blip on the evolutionary scale here. Um, so we're talking way down here at this root before we evolved to these three domains, bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. Remember, archaea has a lot of similarities to eukarya, such as histones and introns, despite the fact that they're prokaryotic like bacteria. So the early Earth, um, Eventually, so there's very, very early Earth, about 3.5 billion years ago, it's thought. Um, then cyanobacteria came along, which provided oxygen for the Earth. Um, at some point, we have uh, eukaryotic cells coming about through the endosymbiont theory, um, and then multicellular organisms, colonization of land, and eventually human. 90% of the Earth's existence was completely aquatic in terms of life. The gradual chemical evolution hypothesis um, states that the early Earth environment or atmosphere was very hostile. Low oxygen, lots of lightning, lots of volcanic activity, and lots of UV light. And there was some sort of chemical evolution. Synthesis and accumulation of amino acids and nucleotide monomers from inorganic molecules. Um, the monomers then could make polymers, probably through dehydration synthesis reactions, and um, eventually that led to the very beginning of life, which was the first protocell, um, where we had a membrane separating that cell from its environment. Um, there is some evidence for this theory through the Miller and Ure um, spark ex discharge experiment, which showed that you can recreate kind of early earth conditions in a lab um, with kind of a spark discharge to mimic lightning, and you can actually get amino acids out of that product. So this is kind of abiogenesis, forming life from non-life in very early Earth conditions. Um, it's thought that before DNA, there was RNA. So this is the RNA world hypothesis, showing that RNA was probably the first self-replicating molecule, um, which developed catalytic, catalytic properties or ability to modify molecules around it. So prokaryotes, again, are with um, are character is a characteristic of both the bacteria and the archaea domain. All cells, bacteria, archaea, eukaryote, eukarya, all cells on this environment on life contain a plasma membrane, ribosomes, cytoplasm, and some sort of genetic material. Um, remember, prokaryotic DNA is a single circle of double-stranded DNA whereas eukaryotic cells have several linear pieces of double-stranded DNA. Um, prokaryotes were the only life on Earth for a very, very, very long time. They're found almost everywhere on Earth. They outnumber all eukaryotes combined. Um, only a very small number are pathogenic or harmful to, back to, harmful to humans. Um, and those are the ones that often are popularized in the news. So prokaryotes are extraordinarily successful group of organisms. Um, they're the most successful organisms on Earth. They have a huge metabolic um, versatility. Um, they can use organic inor and inorganic molecules um, to get energy. They have a huge bio um, reproductive potential, again, through binary fission. They evolve very quickly because of that fast reproductive time, and they survive in a huge number of habitats. Um, they're unicellular, very small. They come in three different shapes, um, coxy, bacilli, and spirilli. These are the different shapes, either spherical, rod, or spiral. They reproduce through binary fission. Remember, there's no mitosis because there is no nucleus. 
and mitosis really means nuclear division. They move, um, they can move with flagella, but this is an analogous structure, meaning um, the flagella of a prokaryotic cell versus a eukaryotic cell do not have the same genetic origin. They do not have a common ancestor. They have evolved due to similar environmental pressures. They have a huge diversity of metabolism. Um, that is the most important thing. Um, they can be photoautotrophs, meaning photosynthetic. They can be photoheterotrophs, meaning they use organic molecules in light. Chemoautotrophs, meaning carbon dioxide and inorganic compounds. And then chemoheterotrophs, consuming organic molecules. Uh, many prokaryotic, prokaryote, pro, prokaryotes are symbiotic, meaning they live together. Um, they have ecological relationships with other organisms. Um, a good example is the plaque on our teeth. Um, symbiotic relationships can be mutualistic, benefiting both. They can be commensal, meaning only one benefits. And they can be um, parasitic, meaning one organism benefits, the other is hurt, and as is the in Lyme disease, which is shown here. So bacteria. Um, the cell wall is made of peptidoglycans. This is a target of many antibiotics. They live everywhere. They have one RNA polymerase, no histones and no introns. Archaea, on the other hand, still prokaryotic, but their cell, they have a cell wall not made of peptidoglycans. They are extremophiles. They have many RNA polymerases, histones, and introns, right? So remember, this is why bacteria is kind of on its own tree, and archaea and eukarya um, have a common ancestor from them. Gram stain is what is, helps classify different bacterias. You can have um, the peptidoglycan cell wall either be under an outer membrane or exposed to the environment. So a peptidoglycan is a polymer of sugars and amino acids that form the cell wall of bacteria, and it's a target for many antibiotics. So gram positive here, peptidoglycan is exposed to the environment. This is much easier to treat with antibiotics. And that is it.